Okay, we're gonna start making some... Um, cherry wine. Cherry wine. So we're gonna show you the complete process over a series of days, but it'll all be condensed for you. So the first thing we're going to do is... First thing we're gonna do is put cherries in from 2016, so... Now what we're doing could apply to just about any fruit. You could go to the dollar store and buy those bags of frozen fruit and do the same thing. Yeah. So the first day is really simple. We're just gonna throw the fruit in. We're and gonna... it's actually better frozen because it's broke, the freezing the... process breaks the um, fruits so, down. Cell walls. The cell walls down in the fruit. Yep. So it mm -hmm. actually is a lot better to do it with frozen, but really fresh is great too. Trust me, we've tried it all <laughs> at this point. Next step is we're just gonna put water in it. Now, you'll notice we have reverse osmosis water over here. I'm not using that. I'm using tap water right from the well because it does have a lot of minerals in it, uh, the hardness of the water, and I think it contributes to the, the taste. Um, I'm not gonna fill it all the way because I've gotta leave room for my sugar water for tomorrow. Now you'll notice we're not using a lot of sanitation. That's because I'm about to put in a Camden tablet this you'll get at your wine store. It's Camden it's tablets are, are used to um, really kill germs, uh, but it takes about 24 hours. And these are very cheap. So you put one on a spoon, take another spoon on top of it, crush them together, and it turns into a powder. And all I'm going to do is put it in there, come on top, okay. and then I'm just going to stir it in. And that's it for today. It's just going to sit there for the next 24 hours. We will put a lid on it, bubbler in it. Nothing's going to happen, but I need to seal that hole. I don't want any flies or gnats getting in there. Okay. So we'll come back tomorrow, and then we'll put in the chemicals in the sugar. So after this set for 24 hours, at least with the Camden tablet, now it's time for the chemicals. These are the chemicals that you're going to need. And you find that at your wine store. Yeast nutrient, I'm going to use one and a half teaspoons. Pectic enzyme uh, increases juice yield. The yeast nutrient just gives the yeast, uh, the, like food, gives it a little boost. And the acid blend for a little flavor, I'm going to use one teaspoon. So, uh, again, yeast nutrient, one and a half teaspoons. Pectic enzyme, one and a half teaspoons. Acid blend, one teaspoon. This is now my preferred yeast, which is Lalvin K1V1116. Uh, this stuff really does a number. For the yeast, just used a half a teaspoon of yeast in some warm water with a little bit of the sugar water. That's going to get nice and frothy, and then we'll, we'll blend that in. And the last piece is the sugar water. So this is about three and a half pounds of sugar heated in water and then cooled down. That's going to give the yeast something to eat on. Do a lot of cleanliness so we have the sanitizer, the star sand in a bottle. We just spray our hands, spray the cabinet, spray our equipment. <laughs> spray each other. Spray. <laughs> Everything needs to be sanitary. So the chemicals are in, we give it a stir. You can see the cherries have lost their color. Yes. Uh, which all goes into the wine. Then we're going to pour in the sugar water. Yep, well, we're going to top it off with a little more water. So the one piece of equipment that you're going to need is this, and that is a hydrometer. You're going to measure the specific gravity. You do this before and after, and that way you know what your alcohol by volume is. So we have this tube. So we have this tube that we fill up with the mixture so far. And we're just going to drop this in. It'll overflow, so make sure you're doing this over your bucket. Oops. 
So when it comes to rest, then we're just going to take a reading. So hopefully you can see that, but it is at 1.090. So I'm going to record that. And last thing is we will add the yeast and let the yeast do its thing. The hydrometer isn't super expensive, but it is glass. And if it rolls off your table, it will break. So it comes in this nice plastic case. So every time we're done measuring, the first thing we do is rinse it off and put it back in its case. Because I just don't want to have to go buy another one. So we're going to take the yeast mixture. And it kind of smells like bread right now. Because it's just starting to come to life. And I'm just going to stir that in. We're going to seal it, and it's got this bubbler on it, which keeps air out and bugs. And for the next two or three days, we're just going to open it once a day, give it a stir, just to make sure that uh, everything gets distributed. But within, within about a day or two, that bubbler will just start bubbling away, which means that it's making carbon dioxide, and the yeast is eating the sugar, and farting out carbon dioxide and peeing alcohol, which is what we want. Yay. Uh, get to work, yeast. I'll show you this. I have a small booklet that I use to keep notes in. So this is the cherry wine. I write down what I put in it, what date, and especially the specific gravity. Then I'll know what alcohol by volume it approximately is. All right, so it's been, what, 48 hours? Yep. So it's been 48 hours. And I want you to see, you can already see there's bubbles. And I'm going to give this a little stir. stir. And you'll definitely see all the bubbles that are coming up. You want to get some oxygen down in there so that the yeast has something. But look at that, it's foaming up. Well, the yeast is doing its job. We'll do this a couple of more times, and then we'll leave it alone for about two weeks. All right, so it is the 6th of October. We have transferred the wine to a carboy, but I'm going to show you what we did it with. We didn't film it, but this is a siphon, and it's really nice. You just pump it like that, and it starts. It goes out the tube. You can, it has one of these nice clips, so you can hold it if you need to, and it'll still retain the pressure for the siphon and release it. Of course everything was sprayed, sprayed sprayed with the sanitizer. So this is the result. We put it in a carboy and then we used an old juice jug because it is food safe. And that is what's left. So what's which it? is white cherries because it took all the color from them in the process. And you can see down here there's some just goop and that is dead yeast. So we don't want any of that. This is all gonna go away. Actually, we do feed it to our chickens, uh, and if they don't eat too much, it's okay. <laughs> Otherwise, they get a little drunk. So they're going to stay here for the next couple of weeks, and after that, after we make sure that there's no bubbles, and we'll, we'll be able to see the bubbles coming up here. But once we know that the yeast is done and stopped working, then we will transfer it to a bucket for a couple of days. Uh, but we'll show you that step next. By the way, did taste it, and the sweetness is all gone. So it's we, a very dry wine now. So we know it's working. All right, so we're coming to the end of the winemaking. We started on 18 September. Today is the 27th of October. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the the wine from these two jugs. We're going to back into a bucket. Transfer it to a bucket. We're going to take a hydrometer reading. I'll show you that and finally we're going to add a Camden tablet so everything has been sprayed with a sanitizer happy wife is working the pump be very careful with this point so if you do it you'll get it out there we go and it starts coming down the tube and we're going uh, in. Put it down in mine and he's got it on his. Goes into the bucket to fill up. 
trying not to get the sediment that's on the bottom so there will be a little waste at the end also known as a sample but there is a space at the bottom so it doesn't suck everything up at the bottom yes. so that is a nice nice color very clear too getting everything sprayed down that is the hydrometer and drop that in do this over the bucket just about sink so it's 0 0.98 0 0.986 we're gonna go with 0.986 to do the alcohol by volume I just look up on my phone I just put in in Google ABV comes up ABV calculator and then I usually just click the first one you'll see something like this where you put in the original I'm just gonna back it up my original was 1.090 and my ending was 0.986 hit the update there it is Okay, so it starts up here. So those are the two numbers he put in. The before and the after. And then, so our cherry wine is 13.65%, which, yes, is very high, but not unnormal for us. It's very good for us. It's about normal for us. <laughs> but it's very unnormal if you drink wine from the store. Yeah, wine in the store is probably, what, oh. six to eight, somewhere in there. So I mark it down here, and that just stays with the bucket until we finally bottle it. So our last step is we're going to put in the Camden tablet. The Camden tablet stops any action of the yeast. So here it is. What I'm going to do is take two spoons, and I'm just going to crush it together. Is it soft like a baby aspirin? Yep, turns into a powder. So put it in there. This has already been sprayed. I'm just going to stir it in. And there's been no action uh, noticeable, so the yeast is all gone, but this is, I'm still going to do it. It's yeast. a precaution. Yeah, you don't want to think it's gone and not totally kill the yeast. If the yeast hasn't stopped and you sweeten it up before you bottle it, now you're making champagne. The bubbles are going to form and you might break your bottle. Uh, not good. <laughs> And you definitely will have a, a bottle that ex feels like it's exploding when you open it. <laughs> it's quite scary. Right, so we'll let that sit, rest. We're going to cover it up. And then we'll come back tomorrow and put it in a bottle. Now we're on the final step, which is putting them into bottles. But before we do that, we're going to sweeten it up to taste. So we're going to add simple syrup. This is a lot of sugar and water. You can tell it's almost honey consistency. You don't have to do this, but we like a sweeter wine. I can't overemphasize the part about sanitation. We have sprayed everything, our hands, that spoon, all of the pumping equipment, the bottles, even this over here that we're going to dip it out with. And she's just going to pour a little bit in here, give it a taste. Still very dry. We get to do this again. I'm going to pour the rest of it, damn it. That, that all needs to go. Pour it in. Also, while you are stirring, uh, you're getting out any of the carbon dioxide that still may be in the solution. Just agitating it gets that out. That is a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Goodness. And we did not drink off of that cup. We drink off of the cup she's pouring into. <laughs> Get you on camera drinking, you lush. Yeah, it's better. What do you think? I like it. 
Andrea tends to like a little bit sweeter wine than I do. I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's just, and it's one of those that needs to sit now yep. because it's got that hot taste. Yep. So. <clears throat> Having it sit for the next two or three months gets rid of that hot taste while the alcohol blends in with the water and it gives it a smooth flavor. Ages. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to fill the bottles. All right, so this is best with two people, but she's got the, the siphon. And I'm going to take I'm gonna take the hose and I'm gonna grab a bottle and I'm gonna go off the table down onto the floor. Okay. Here she goes. I fill it about halfway up the neck of the bottle. We started with the small bottles and then we went to the quarts. We like those much better. This has a little pinching device that lets me turn it off. Go into the next one. So the last little thing I do is put a label on it and I put what it is when it got bottled and the alcohol percentage. And I just use my labeler. So that is it. Um, it started, we started this on the 18th of September. It is now the 28th of October. So that is a month and 10 days. So five and a half weeks. And we have a little over a gallon of delicious cherry wine. We know exactly what's in it. We just wanted to share this with you and let you know that you can do this. It's not very expensive and it is delicious. And you make it to how you like. To your taste. So we hope you found this complete process to be helpful. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button, uh, follow this channel, and let us know if you're making wine and how it tastes. What you're using. All right. Say goodbye, happy wife. Goodbye. Bye. Time to can. Yes. More farm work.